set to go? Yes, sir. Okay, so we do it. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Any adjustments to the agenda? Uh, I do, Mr. Chair. I have a um, RSU 21 update and a planning board update. And yes, Mr. Chair, I have two more subject matters I want to, want to take up on the manager's report, reference to the reuse room and hazmat day. Okay. Motion we approve as amended. Second. All favor. Yeah. Public forum. And then want to address the board with respect to an item that's not already on the agenda. On that, we'll move on. Approval of the minutes of July 26th. Motion we approve is submitted. Second. All in favor then? All right, Dan, any board reports? Okay, um, we'll start with the um, Monday, August 2nd, uh, RSU 21 uh, school board meeting. Let's see. So there was a nomination and approval of the following. Uh, Danielle Rus Daniel Roussel, mathematics teacher, MSK. Salary of 51,148. Amanda Wilson, grade three teacher, SRS. Salary of 59,839. Elizabeth Thompson, grade four teacher, SRS. Salary of 44,735. Taylor Pearson, social studies teacher at MSK. Salary of 49,462. Sarah Sukaforth, elementary music band teacher at KCS. Salary of 47,345. James Maloney Hawkins, science teacher, MSK. Salary of 51,148. Allison Abbott, grade K and one teacher, KCS, salary of 62,759. Sean Doherty, mathematics teacher at the high school, salary of 64,744. And Crystal St. Orange, mathematics teacher at the high school, salary of 74,216. A resignation of Renee Doucette, an English teacher at the high school and resignation of Jennifer Kluger, elementary Spanish teacher at KES. Uh, superintendent's report. Uh, she gave an update on the um, upcoming school uh, sessions. It's, she really emphasized five days a week. She heard it, you know, last year, and she's doing everything that she can to make sure that we have five days a week. And that means masks for all. All kids, all students, all faculty uh, will be required to wear masks. They're working on some enhanced cleaning. Um, and they'll do whatever they can for social distancing whenever possible. They're still looking at trying to different ways to make sure that they do uh, as much social distancing as possible. Dr. Burgess discussed the COVID issue. He talked about the Delta variants and how 20% uh, of the cases um, are in children. And then the majority of the cases are folks that have not been uh, vaccinated. <clears throat> He's confident that um, if we do all of the steps that the superintendent wants to do, you know, the mask, the social distancing, um, that there will be a very low transmission rate. Uh, when it comes to sports, obviously, you know, it's pretty hard to wear masks on sports, um, but what they will do with sports is if you're on the sidelines, you'll, uh, you'll be required to wear a mask. <clears throat> uh, Director of Operations gave an update on uh, the bus drivers. 
we talked about the shower project at the high school. There are seven showers that are being installed. Those will be completed by mid-August. Kudos out to the facilities and maintenance uh, group that have done a ton of work and the custodians that have done a ton of work this summer to get everything ready. The superintendent updated on the, uh, the summer school uh, program. It looks like it's been a success. She feels that it's been a success, uh, but they're in the middle of doing some testing to gather the success rate and to um, you know, look at further improvements. She's having um, admin, meeting, uh, admin meetings weekly uh, to talk about best practices, guidelines, keeping everybody informed, um, complete transparency and clarity on, on uh, the direction of where they're going. August 26th is a uh, kickstart and school board members are invited to attend that. Uh, when, when the superintendent's report was done, the board made a motion to accept uh, Dr. Cooper's recommendations uh, for the new school year, you know, the masking and all of that stuff. Um, one of the, the, the student liaison, uh, Mary Hauser, um, asked about um, if they could keep some sort of, of a hybrid for students that may be out uh, for COVID issue. And uh, the superintendent stated that she would take that into consideration. Um, let's see, they approved uh, yeah, they approved one, one, uh, uh, where is it? Right. So they approved, um, they had the second reading of the, the board of directors that was approved. And at that point it was a little bit after 930. So uh, they decided to, um, all the updates from the, from the board chair and all that stuff, they decided to uh, postpone that to the next meeting. We adjourned at 9.34 p.m. Questions? Perfect. Okay, planning board meeting, August 3rd. <clears throat> Public hearing, uh, conditional use permit amendment for specialty design stables. Uh, that's an amendment uh, to amend the conditional use permit to include the addition of a 14,400 square foot indoor parking area. Uh, a few comments from, from some of others, nothing major, just, you know, some clarification stuff. Pending applications, uh, conditional use permit for the, uh, the stables, uh, that got approved. New application was Oak Ridge uh, Terrace Phase 2. That's a subdivision uh, proposal to construct a 560 linear foot cul-de-sac road through uh, phase two uh, with the addition of six new houses. That's a Walter Woods uh, that owns that. Um, again, a few, a few comments, nothing really major on that. Uh, Walter Woods bought, I guess the, he owns Laurel Lane now. Um, it's, it's no longer a private road through that association, but it's a, it's a private road, but he owns it. And uh, he, there was some discussion on how the, he had the road repaved and there's some scalloping in the road. So he's gonna have that all repaved. His plan is in a couple of years after he goes through the, the process to petition that for a town road. Uh, let's, let's, let's see, conditional use permit for the Holy Donut. We've got a Holy Donut coming to the town of Arundel. That's gonna be over at the, uh, <clears throat> the old seafood place. And um, it's gonna be a, a drive-through. And then they're also gonna have a manufacturing facility that's pretty much gonna take care of all of their, their places. They're gonna do all of the manufacturing there. Uh, their plan is to employ about 22 people. So um, it's looking pretty good. They're having a site walk on, on that uh, on August, Monday, August 16th. Planner's report, um, he did talk a little bit about, uh, he really didn't have much, but he talked a little bit about how things have been working with Jim and Ann. Um, you know, there's been a few things here and there that were missed. You know, Ann's been doing a whole lot of new things that she's never done before. But all in all, he's very happy with how it's working. He said things, you know, working with Jim and Ann have been pretty awesome and very pleased with how that's working. And we adjourned at 8.58. Okay, thank you, Dan. Uh, anybody have any questions of Dan or comments? 
And then we'll move on to the manager's report then, beginning with snow plowing. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, um, thank you. We've been, as you know, um, you had asked me at the, at the last meeting to, to uh, work on putting together a request for proposal. Um, this is probably the second or third rendition that I've been working on. And through the process, I've also been speaking with both uh, Terry and Roger as to um, the eventually uh, to whether or not we're gonna have to actually do the proposals. Um, things have been very fluid for us and um, Roger's been um, uh, able to get a couple more applications that have come in We've also had uh, one of our full-time employees just recently uh, pass his CDL license. Um, so all of our staff right now are CDL qualified, which is uh, a benefit for, our, for us. Um, and so we're into that, um, and, I, and that's why I asked Roger and Terry to come tonight because we're in that position that um, uh, we may be successful enough with some of our own personnel and some of the people that we may hire that we can avoid hiring a uh, uh, outside contractor to do a portion of the town. So uh, Terry and uh, Roger here, they can sort of fill in the details and then we can decide whether you want me to move forward with what we have here tonight or sort of wait and see how this thing's going to flush out for us because uh, it's a little bit better than we thought it was two weeks ago. So. You got the floor, Roger. Yeah. You can come on up, sit at the table so we can see you, Roger. Need to, need to speak in the mic. Yeah. No, no, we can, but <laughs> dynamic duo. Is that mic turned on? The, the mic is on, yeah. It's off or on? It's on. I'm kind of torn either way with this. I know talking to the RSU is not going to be a fun thing. It's one if we can't plow roads. And I'm going to appreciate the fact that we can't do what we've always done. It wouldn't be a bad idea just to see what the cost of heat really is. I saw a copy of Wyman's contract, quite frankly, I think Rumble's been getting a hell of a deal for a long time. It's $360,000 this year. That's over half of our current budget. Keith has changed this a little bit so that it now reads 11.7 miles a road. That is basically one of our upper routes, which would encompass Hill Road, Trumpbrook Road, the upper end of Limerick Road, we know it as route number two. It says Mountain Road to Limerick Road, Limerick to Alfred Road, Alfred Road to Hill Road, into Lyman, turn around through Trope Road, Thompson, Curtis, and then Irving Road back to the Gulf Coast. So it's that upper loop. To me, that would be the only one that would make sense to put out. It kind of overlaps with somebody right next door who's already on the hill road. And quite frankly, I think you're only going to get, I'd be surprised if you got more than one better. But more than likely, it would be a forum, which is taking snow by this. I'm not opposed to seeing this go to bid for that. You can hold it in reserve. Personally, I don't think we're going to need to do that. I've had five applications yesterday. Only one return phone call all day long. But yeah, for full time employment. Yeah. But even though. We're not getting any. I mean, we hadn't got any for a long time. Now all of a sudden, it's, it's there. But I mean, we could still put this out. I mean, just if we put, put it out, doesn't mean we have to approve, approve, exactly. approve it. But that gives us time for you to see if you can, if, if, if your hires happen. Um, and I, I think, you know, the roads should be listed on this contract here, on whatever we're asking for for proposal. Uh, you can just refer to it to that's all. Give yeah. that a copy of it. Um, I, you know, I guess my, my put is, why wouldn't we want to try this anyways? Even if, even if he has, you know, I guess it depends on how much it is, but, I, you know, I think we're financially in a position that we might be able to afford it, even if you get your, 
you know, your extra help, but, you know, there's kind of what I'm thinking, but. I think you're gonna have some sticker show. What's that? I think you're gonna have some sticker show. Could be. Yeah. That number for Lyman Road, is that all of Lyman? Like, that is all of Lyman. How many miles of road is that? It's just about the same as around us. We're within a few miles one way or the other. Physical size, they might be a little bigger. Road miles is close. Yeah. So I don't know about their developments, whether they've got more than we do or less. My gut feeling is they might have less, but I don't know that. Do you save any money if we award a contract to somebody else? I don't see how. I think it's I don't think so either. either so. Uh, yeah, if you cut down and pay, you cut their contract in half, we're looking at probably a, a little over a hundred and almost hundred and eighty thousand dollars to to plow 11.7 miles of road. Yeah. Um, the way I massaged the RFP too was that they would they would work exclusively through the public works department. They would be called out by by Roger. Uh, they wouldn't be as independent as perhaps they are in other communities. Um, we would also supply all their salt and sand. So they would have to actually physically come in contact with us so we can always keep that communication open. So, um, and I think I, I concur with what Roger's assessment is. I don't think we're gonna get many proposals. Uh, it's a unique uh, skill set that we're asking for. I, I think years ago, there were a lot of people doing it, but I think now there is, isn't as many. Um, so I think we'll, we'll be limited to the amount we, the folks that we do get. What you Keith, you said hundred thousand. What's that? What what is that? What what you what, mentioned a hundred thousand dollars. What 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 is that? Is that what what we estimate is for well, us to do those roads or no? What I'm saying is that uh, right now the Dayton Snow Fighters do all of Lyman. Their contract is three hundred and sixty thousand dollars for a little over 22, 23 miles of road. So if I cut it in half. You know, okay. that, that's a what I'm saying, think that that's coming right. Up. Conservatively, yeah. that's what I'm projecting. Okay. It may be less, it may be more. I'm not quite sure because I don't know the fine details of all of what um, they they supply if they if they have to add in the uh, the salt and the sand and all that kind of stuff as well. So um, that's just a conservative estimate. So what I'm hearing is that you want us to maybe go forward and put this out. Um, Roger's still assessing some of these um, these applications we're getting in. We had another um, one. I think we have, we've offered him a condition of employment. We're, um, we're just waiting for his notice to be up with uh, his present employer. And so we'll have another full timer on. Um, but we still got a couple of spots that are still open. So um, it's would, looking better. That would still be one full-time driver labor position open. And one, the one that really hurts is mechanic. Fleet mechanic, yep. Right now we have yeah, two guys. Yeah, we got the double turn. duos here. Yeah. They're doing fleet work, so. All right, so what I'm hearing is that you want us to go ahead and just continue with this. So I'll, well, I'll that fill in. Was, that was just me. I don't know about that. I, I, I'm looking at the heads nodding. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm so. I got a couple of questions. Why only 55, 65% of the performance bond, 65% of the proposed contract? Why? Uh, the, only, only, the only reason it's there is because I took it out of another contract. So if we, go, if we want to go 100%, we go 100%. Yeah, I think we want to cover ourselves. Yeah. Um, yep. And I don't think four hundred thousand dollars in insurance is enough. No. Four hundred. You don't think four hundred is enough? Not, personal not, injury? Not, I don't think so. Okay. I think you need at least five hundred, if not a million. All right, I'll I'll double check with the MMA again to yep. see where we are. Okay. One of the things I have a little bit about this. Because you always seem to lose a little bit of control when you're having somebody else do your work for you. And in a perfect world, it should work. But depending on who he has for the driver, and he knocks down everything in sight, my phone's going to be ringing a lot. So 
little things like that. But again, I think we got to do it just to test the waters and see what's out there. I'm yeah, guessing right. you're going to pay six thousand dollars a mile, bare minimum, plus material. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's I, seventy I, grand right there, just on those numbers for the mileage. I get that we lose some control, but you know, obviously, I think we have to make sure that we get all the roads plowed, and um, I, I think, yeah, it depends on what it comes in at, but you know. I think it's something that we should, you know, we should give it a shot because I think it would help help you guys out tremendously, especially if you're short on, you know, on drivers and. But that's just. It's, it's all about the fact that these guys coming in, if they're any good, you know, we can hire them. Recognize any of the names at all? One of them is a repeat from before, and the CDL license thing is kind of funny because there's actually an A license, a B, and there's actually a C, CDL, depending on what you're doing. And this guy, one of them has a commercial driver's license, but it's only a C, doesn't it? It was a bit of good. So he was stressing the point that he has a CDL license, but unfortunately, not the right one. Doesn't cover what we need. Roger, early on, you mentioned something about the RSU. What, what was your comment? I missed that. My comment was the fact that the RSU is not going to be real happy if we can't plow our roads because they're going to have a lot of school days off. Oh, oh. yeah. So we have had storms last year, and I told him, and I can't tell you the exact language I use, <laughs> but there was only going to be two fools there some night, and it happened. We had a snowstorm. Some of the guys were away for whatever reason, the two trucks went out that night. He was driving one and I was driving the other. That's not a fun time. Yeah. No. But we've got a few other guys. One of the one of the guys did pass his license the other day. We've got another guy that has been through the interview process. We're waiting for him to clear his physical and everything. But he is one of the more motivated guys that I've talked to since. We've had crews. He seems to be a go-getter, whether he lays down when he gets here or not, I, but I don't think so. He seems motivated. I talked to another guy tonight that right now is working for the DOT. He's bought snow before. He's got brush. He's done everything we do. Sometimes those are the ones you look at real close. Sometimes they go in a different file. Other times, no. There's like a box of chocolates. <laughs> Just keep running and running. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to test the waters. Okay, yeah. we'll yeah. test the waters. Yeah. Right. Yep. Thank now, you, well, not, not to double down at all, but is there such a a thing as like hiring out mechanics? Do they, is there like mobile mechanics that we could look at too? I have actually talked to Kenny Bunkport's mechanic. It's going to do a little moonlight for us this week. He's off on Fridays. He's going to come in and work on one of our trucks. You're going to pay him as a subcontractor. So for some of the stuff, I mean, we just don't have the tools for to do some of these things. So this guy more and more would do that. Uh, I don't know. They just don't seem to be a lot of mechanics up there. Right now. And if, if you do have an applicant, they don't have the diesel experience. You know, they have just regular like you know, dealership. Like Mac motors or something like that. Right. So they don't have the diesel experience that we need. I've seen trucks on the road, like you know, Caterpillar on the side of the trucks. And, so I didn't know if there were services on there that did like yeah. mobile. Depending on what you've got for an issue, I mean, a lot of those guys have road guys that do come out for certain stuff. But yeah, I don't know what Josie is like, South of Milton. Yeah, Chadwick, yeah, Dave yeah. Ross, yeah, all those guys. I hate to see you guys get into snow plowing. So that's probably when most of your Ooh, stuff yes. breaks down, right? Well, everything that we have gets serviced in the fall prior to snow. Yeah. Well, by the time stuff gets done in the spring, just to keep stuff a little separate so that we can absolutely be ready for the right. snow. That's that's a key piece that's missing right now. And knock on wood, even last year, I don't think we had many breakdowns, serious breakdowns. 
And then with our upgrade of our fleet, right. that's right. helped us a lot that's too. Right. So. But still, that doesn't, you know, a uh, sander chain or something like that in the middle of a storm would be a, uh, an issue. I'll have to please the military surplus. We've got a couple of backups. So. <laughs> We'll plow half the last season because we had a major problem with one or the other. New trucks that's only 24 years old. Yeah. And that was down for three weeks or something like that. So we do have backups, but it's with somebody in the seat that we need the most. Hopefully we can cure that. Okay. Thank you, Jess. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Just to give you a, a quick update on the uh, uh, the GIS setup and the mapping, uh, I, I spoke with uh, Aaron Weston from CAI Technologies last week, and then also with Beth. And our plan is right. Our plan is to uh, once fall gets here, is to begin in earnest to upgrade our, update our mapping. Um, I'm asking CIA to come in and sit down with us probably after the tax rate has been set to lay out a plan of action to get our maps up to date. Right now, our maps are 2017. And the only upgraded map that has everything on it is the one that is in best office she has a master map of when the deeds come in and they've been recorded and she gets copies of them she places them literally on her map now CIA, CAI technology is telling me that as long as they have the deeds they can take the uh, copies of the deeds with our maps and update our maps based on what the deed descriptions read so still a little bit of conversation to happen uh, but my goal is to get our maps up to date and then um, at that point begin the other process of what CIA can provide to us, which will be the layering of the maps. So not only will we have updated maps, eventually we'll have um, the layering of the zonings, uh, zoning that will go on the mapping, um, uh, whatever uh, business zone or residential zone they're in, whatever shoreland zoning protection, whatever setbacks are required within the within that area will be also be able to layer it on the maps. And then if there's public water or anything to those extents, though we don't have a lot of it in town, we do have it on the route one corridor that will be identified. So folks can then reference our, go on the website and reference this material and have the ability to to see it without really coming in. So that's the ultimate goal here. But right now we've got to focus on those mapping. And so that's where we're gonna set our focus here coming up in the early fall. Um, again, I, I did spike, speak to um, Beth. Right now we're shooting for your next business meeting to set the tax rate. So, which will be the 23rd. So as soon as I have the uh, data in my hands, I will get it out to you hopefully prior to your uh, getting your packets. So at least you'll have that information and some recommendations from us as to where we think we're gonna be uh, proposing for a tax rate. So you can take a look at all of that. The RFPs for landscaping ha have gone out. I've received one inquiry at this point. Uh, they're not due back until I think uh, the 19th of August and then um, we'll open them or have discussion with them at your meeting on the 23rd. So um, based on what I received, um, I'm getting a weekly, the, the proposal was a weekly cost of 300 a week, which would put it in, if, you know, if you're looking at six, six months, which would include the mowing, uh, weed whacking, um, shrub, uh, shrubbery, um, um, maintenance, as well as mulching, that's uh, all included in the package. But if you break it down, it's like 300 a week. So it'd be about 7,200 that if we go to the, the high end of 
you know, like 24 weeks, which that may be a little high. Um, so I'm just trying to figure out the numbers right now. So i um, not sure if that 300 is a good number. It's the first time I've ever done it. So we'll have to wait and see. Hopefully we get other folks that will come in with, with some costs associated with us. I got a, I got a comment. Sure. Um, so when are, so we still have some dead trees out here that have been replaced and, yep. it, you know, it, we've had a wet summer. It probably would have been a good opportunity to get these things done now while the weather was wet. Uh, what, what's going on with those? I certainly got a hold of, uh, of Luke and identified the ones that were needed to be replaced. He indicated he was going to contact the contractor who placed them in, come down, take a look and do what they had to do. So. I'll follow up, obviously, with Luke, but I've got some rhododendrons that are bad. Yeah. Um, we've got some uh, shrubbery that's really tilted over that should be repositioned, I think. But I don't, I'm not a, I don't deal with that stuff, so I'm not sure how they okay. how they do that. So uh, those are the questions I have with him. So um, hopefully he gets somebody down here. Um, just to give you a, a quick query, um, we had the questions on the Route 111 um, uh, on the issues related to the speed lane and how fast the speed is going and all those kinds of things. So I spoke to the Sheriff's Department, they're going to do additional patrols to control speed. I also spoke to um, the DOT who provided me their, um, I guess they have a, a, a public website, which I took some of the information that I provided on the sheet that I gave you, uh, specifically on uh, Route 111 from New Road to, um, um, to uh, Drew's Mills Road in that area, and provided some crash detail for, for you from 2019 and 20, through 2021. Um, and uh, the things that I looked at were the, the, in 2021, there have been three incidents that occurred to date of reporting. Uh, of the three, three, two took place in front of Kate's Butter, and one of them was for, involved personal injury. So um, there have been uh, a few accidents there, but not as many as I, um, that I would think there would be based on the concerns that would be reflected. But uh, in 2021, there have been 56 crashes through the whole entire Route 111 in Arundel to date. Um, as you can see, some of those aren't in that uh, uh, that uh, location that we thought they would be in, but um, um, it appears that most of them have occurred in the month of June and most happen on a Tuesday around one o'clock. So, Go figure. I, What's going on Tuesdays? I don't know. But you, to me, I would have thought that, you know, it, it would be a weekday, I would think, but it would That'd be, be closer to five yeah. than anything else. But five or in the morning. Uh, yeah, or in the morning. So the crash uh, de uh, detail is there. We've got folks involved in it. Um, we'll see how it flushes out. And, uh, if we get any more concerns, um, obviously we can take a deeper dive into what's going on out there. Um, I checked my emails, I think it was on Sunday night and saw on my e emails to my office that uh, Saturday afternoon, somebody uh, thanked me for opening the reuse room again. Uh -huh. um, which I thought was totally surprising because it had not been open. So this morning I responded to uh, the individual indicated to them that it had not been open, but talking to Roger today, I guess uh, there was some material that had been placed in there, more clothing than anything else. Um, I think people who were taking it upon themselves to reopen uh, and I've assured the individual who emailed me that it's not open yet. And I instructed uh, Public Works to go ahead and make sure the material that's in there gets disposed of because 
I, from what Roger was explaining to me, we've never really taken clothing before, and there was an abundance of clothing that had been deposited. So Indeed, all that stuff can be brought down at Goodwill. They'll take all of that. You no, know, if it's in good case, yeah. Do we need to put signs there that says reuse room is not open? Or I, I yeah, yeah, I guess. I was not shopping. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you were looking for some clothes, were you? Well, oh, um, so for some reason, I guess people thought, I, I don't know if you, were, if any of you experienced anything on Saturday. I, I saw it open. You saw it open? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It was open? Oh, yeah, it was open. There was, there's a woman that's been kind of always there. When, uh, I don't know what her name is. I haven't talked okay. to her, but it was, it, it was, she was. Okay, so she must have taken it upon herself to open it. So yeah. unbeknownst to us at the mm -hmm. time. So well, if it's padlocked, how did she open it? Well, it it generally isn't, but as Roger says, we can padlock if we have to. Hmm. Yeah. So anyway, mm -hmm. interesting, uh, interesting thing. But um, the other thing I have is the um, annual uh, hazmat day that we generally have with um, Kenny Bunk, Kenny Bunk Port, Arundel, and the town of Wells gets involved. Uh, it's generally scheduled for. October, I think it's scheduled for October 9th this year. I was reviewing the contract um, and I noticed within the contract language that Clean Harvest had sent us, they, they were referring to any litigation would be, would be exercised through the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Um, and so when I pointed that out to um, the powers to be over in, in Kennebunk, they indicated to me and they conferred it with Clean Harbors that that language has been in there for the last several years. I, I never caught it or I would have mentioned it before. So I mentioned it to them. Um, the response I got was, um, yeah, it's, it's there, but it's been there for many years and we're not gonna change it. So my, my question to you folks is, I, I asked them to supplement it. You, you, Regardless of put the state of Maine, I mean, th this hazardous material is coming from the state of Maine. The municipalities are within the state of Maine. I thought maybe the language should say that the laws of state of Maine would per pertain to any legal action that would be occurring as a result of this uh, activity. Doesn't seem I'm getting many, um, many uh, the ability to be receptive on that. So what I'm asking you is that, do you want me to uh, I've reached out to our vendor, Casella, to see if they do any hazardous material. I'm very apprehensive about signing a contract that um, says that any litigation has to be handled in the state of Massachusetts, Commonwealth of Massachusetts, as opposed to Maine. So um, am I wrong in this, guys? Or? Does it say that the any litigation will be taken place in Massachusetts or that the laws of Massachusetts will simply apply? It says, <laughs> where does this material go? Does this material stay in the state of Maine or do they take it out of state? The validity, interpretation, and performance of this agreement shall be governed and construed in accordance with the laws of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts without regard to its conflict of laws, rules, and each party hereby submits to the exclusive jurisdiction of the state and federal courts of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts for purposes of such proceedings related to any claim or dispute arising here under. So again, my, my issue is I feel very uncomfortable signing that on behalf of the citizens of Arundel and you folks. My guess is the laws of Massachusetts are probably less stringent than the laws of Maine. <laughs> I don't know if that's true, but I don't want to go to Massachusetts if I've got to get yeah. involved in a fight. Right. Uh, so know. I've asked them to, uh, I, I've asked them to at least add an addendum to 
cover the state of Maine for any uh, legal actions that may occur. Um, I haven't heard back. So I, I'm not signing it at this point. Um, and we may, uh, we may be going it alone or we may not have a hazmat day until that gets resolved somehow. Um, so that's where I am with that. Do we know how many people take advantage of that? Have we ever done a... Um, I think there were uh, 26 yeah, last not a year. Whole lot, is it? I mean, now, there, there isn't many. I think we could probably go a year or so yeah. and then have a, an abundance of people. But there's, I'm hoping there's other options that may be available to us, and maybe Casella can assist us mm -hmm. in, in achieving that goal. So that's yeah. where I am right now. I'll keep you all posted if mm -hmm. something else changes. That's all I have. Okay. The business then we have a municipal release deed relative to lot 25A on map on tax map one. Yes, uh, uh, this is the um, this was the the piece that uh, the the gentleman became was deceased, mm -hmm. and I initially brought it in, indicating that. Um, you know, the, the deed that I had had written, as you pointed out, was inaccurate simply because the man wasn't wasn't alive anymore. Um, so what occurred here is I contacted uh, People's Choice and so and told them that I, I don't have any authority to, to sell it or to 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 take your money and and give a deed to you. Um, what occurred then was that uh, their their attorney contacted me on several occasions, um, and at that point I, you know, reached out to our attorney and had them both talk, provided both of them the complete uh, uh, file for review, and they both indicated that in 2016, when the mortgage holder was notified, we did not receive return a green card. That was not in the packet. I could not find it. it wasn't located there. So they felt that with uh, with a series of interruption within the process, that there was an ability to um, uh, complete this municipal release deed to the estate of Kenneth King uh, that would protect the mortgage company with its uh, ability to you know, at least have some sort of hold on the property. Um, and so they came up with this release deed. So that's why it's before you tonight to, to see if it's something that uh, needs to be tweaked a little bit more or you feel it's okay. Um, but this is what the town attorney suggested. Town attorney yep. and the attorney the from the bank. Attorney for the bank or for the credit union. Yes. So they're both okay with the grantee being the estate of Kenneth King? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I would note, however, uh, Jason's name is spelt wrong. Can I pick up on that? <laughs> oh, it is. Oh, yeah. Look at that. They put that A in there instead of the E, right? A's okay, but he's away. <laughs> okay. Well, why don't, we, why don't we hold off so I can clean that up? And then we'll have you we'll have you sign it at the meeting on the twenty fifth. So what happened is people didn't get notice of the tax lien. Um, okay. Well, that's you know every other record's there, but we can't locate that one, and right. nor can they locate it. So oh. they're indicating they didn't get notice. Right. So they they've got the right actually within thirty days I think, to come forward. Eugene. Yep. Yeah. So I'll, uh, I'll redo that to make sure. I'm sorry I missed that. I could have corrected that before tonight, so. Um, approval of uh, payable and payroll. So moved. Second. Any other business? Yeah, a couple, a couple of items. Yeah. Good. Um, just an update, um, the new mics, hopefully they should be on order, the new microphones. 
Yes, I, I, uh, he was gone. I, um, when I got your email, I reached out right out to him and said, you know, please uh, move forward. And he said he would. Yeah. It looks like they won't be here until September, October or yeah. sometime. Yeah, September time frame. So hopefully those will be uh, much, much better. They'll work out pretty good. And then the other thing that I have is, uh, we heard anything more yet on the campground property? That was due. Right, we're, we're moving forward. Um, you haven't heard anything back from him? Uh, the only thing that Jim told me is that uh, that the property owner moved two cars. And that was it. And then I noticed today that there looked like there was some furniture that's been pulled out of the building and laid out on the on the front lawn. <laughs> um, so we're we're just proceeding. I know that uh, Leah was on vacation this week, so um, both Jim and I will get back to her and to, to keep moving forward with this uh, process. But, the, you know, the interesting thing here, and I don't know if I mentioned it to you before, is that the, the town did, um, did clean this property once before. Yeah. We have an $80,000 lien on the property already. Just FYI to you folks. I knew that we had cleaned it. I didn't know that we had a lien on it, but yep. I knew that we had done it. Through her title search, she was able to determine that that lien's there, still outstanding. Hmm. <laughs> was that the delightful news? <laughs> well, yeah, I, I, mean, I, I, I didn't think it was delightful news either because I, I don't think we'll ever recoup all our no, costs associated no. with that piece of property. and. No way. Unfortunately, we'll we'll never get yeah. there. I got, I just want to mention one thing. Uh, Dan had mentioned earlier at the, pl the planning board meeting that this guy on Lower Lane was going to present that road to the town for to take it over. Eventually, that's his plan. Is there any way we can expedite the the committee to look at impact fees for on some of these future projects because I mean we're losing people on the public work side and gaining more roads. Is that something we could maybe pick the pace up on? And I don't know if it's too late in the running for this guy where he's already like pre-approved with the applications and stuff, but to to try to develop a impact impact fee process, yeah. yeah. I mean look at look at his song when that at some point in time when that if that Development comes, development comes to yeah. the town. I mean, that's a huge development. And boy, that's just gonna. I know well, Roger in his mind, he's thinking, man, that's just gonna add a whole I know they agree. The, part of their approval process, they agreed to provide over a thousand, I think it's a thousand dollars every lot that they sell. And it went, it was di earmarked for uh, recreation for park rec improvement or recreation. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So but that whether they had to do that or not, they, they, they did that. So no, that was part of. Um, I was on the planning board when okay. that came up, and um, that was a discussion because of initially we were looking at trying to see if they could put a ball field over oh, there. Oh, I get, that, I see. You know, or something. You know, some, and they said, "Well, we'll give you, we'll give you some." Oh, okay, today. okay. Yeah. So, so what you're saying, Jason, is that we should get going on the putting together in this sanctuary. Okay, and this guy's already made it apparent that that road, he wants the town to take that road over. I would think that would be the an opportunity before phase two gets started, maybe. I don't know if we're too late on phase one. I don't know how the impact fees work. If it's already approved through the planning board, can you go back and get impact fees? I don't I think so. Done, yeah. right? Probably not. Yeah, I don't think so. But. And, and he's got, it won't be until, so what he did, it's got to be a year, and then they top code it, so it'll be another year. So it's probably two years before he can come back to the town. Um, and petition for um, approval. But, you know, we get developments coming in, you know, as Lee Jay said, we're busy as heck. So to your point, maybe, we, you know, anything going forward, we need to look at that and see if it's really gonna, this is gonna cripple Washer big time. I agree with you. Well, just his song going development. down and the road volume's going up. Yes. Yeah. We're going the wrong direction. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just his song's development will take one truck. I mean, that would, Keep yeah. the person busy most of the day. Yeah, you know, his song's property, you know, I, I go out there, walk around there a lot. And when you're coming in from the old Alpha Grove, you get to that first, it's not a cul-de-sac, but it's a circle. And boy, I'll tell you, as more and more people get in it, that's a dangerous, I can see somebody going straight, because you can't, all of a sudden it just goes down into a hole. And to me, there should be some fencing there or something to, to 
to delineate that, hey, you know, you can't go straight here because it, it, that's going to be that's going to be real tricky right there at some point in time. Right? I, I can just see an accident happening there. Uh, I mean, we can't do anything with that at this point now, but uh, maybe we can ask this on to do something. But um, it's his road at, at right now. But if it ever becomes our road, and we need to put some sort of guardrail there, right? because I can see an accident happening there big time. Well, ultimately, that will be a decision made by the, the, the taxpayers and the townspeople, because yeah. uh, it will be a warrant article. Yeah, but I mean, they've never, at least as long as I've been on the board, we've never turned the, turned the road down. Well, I don't that, know if they've had in the past, but that may be just, that may be a discussion that you're going to want to have too. Uh, but I'm not saying that we, you know, that you'll ever make that ultimate decision. But yeah, um, I have no idea if this all plans on on asking. The petition yeah, I don't either. I yeah. have no idea, but you know, I I know that he's there all the time in the winter time there, so it's got to be a pretty good expense for him. So sure. Well, eventually it probably won't be him. Once once he's done in there, I assume there'll be an association created and they'll take over. Yeah, I, I, I don't remember what was all. Then the association should be your say, Yeah. Regulations require that, as I recollect. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I know that he, he plows it, at least I see his trucks there, but I don't know if, you know, if he's getting paid by the association to plow it or not. I don't know. Yeah. Refresh my memory. How did we leave the impact fees? Were we going to establish a committee or what were we plan on doing? Was that our goal? I, I think it was. Yeah. I, okay. I think it was. This is right. I think maybe that's, that's a process. It's not, it's not something that happens overnight. Right. right. Yeah. Um, We've talked about this for many, many years. Yeah, um, we have to get some names to be on a committee. Okay. Anybody else? Make a motion to adjourn at what time is it? The second. Seven fifty-two. Seven fifty-two. Is that right? All in favor. Yep. We're out. Yes.